Hi, my name is Bev Schechtman. I'm vice president of the Doctor Patient Forum. Today in my Google Alerts, I saw that the CDC or HHS has actually updated their website to include information about the updated guidelines from 2022. So I'm gonna show you something that they say here. Okay, implementing the 2022 clinical practice guidelines. And let's see improving function for patients. Okay, avoid misapplying the 2022 clinical practice guideline by developing policies and standards that are inconsistent with its purpose or go beyond its intended use. Yeah, that that's sure to help a lot of people. Payers and health systems should not use the 2022 clinical practice guidelines to set rigid standards related to dosage or duration of opioid therapy. The guideline is not a replacement for clinical judgment or individualized patient-centered care. It is intended to be a flexible clinical tool. Policy should not result in rapid tapers or abrupt discontinuation of opioids. So should I say that to a doctor next time? Just tell them, oh, well, the CDC said you shouldn't discontinue. And you think that's going to help the situation? This is my favorite. Ensure that clinicians are not penalized for accepting new patients who take opioids and are not incentivized to implement rapid tapering. That's sure to help with the patient abandonment crisis. It sure is. I am so grateful that made that they made those statements, aren't you? I mean, it's it's sure to help the situation of the millions of abandoned patient patients in this country. Well, the CDC says just don't do it. Just 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 don't. It'll be all right. Well, I'm going to play a quote for you. In 2022, when the updated guidelines came out, Christopher Jones, who was at the CDC at the time, did a press conference, and he was asked. A very important question. It was actually the first question he was asked. So I'm going to play the question, and I want you to listen to his answer. Question is from Andrew Joseph with STAT. Your line is open. Hi. Uh, thanks very much. Um, so, so CDC has been saying basically since at least 2019 that the 2016 guidelines were misapplied. And I know in your commentary in the New England Journal, you kind of make the point that you're going to monitor for unintended effects going forward. Um, but what does that actually look like? Like what happens if an insurer still has a cap of 90 MME or even an individual physician is, you know, cutting patients off? Like what, are, what is CDC going to do about that? Thanks for the question. I think it's a, it's a really important point. And certainly we have tried throughout the guideline to put elements in place with really the overarching principle about supporting clinical judgment in individualized patient-centered care. So I want to be very clear uh, with this conference call and with the release of the guideline today that um, if, if policies are put in place that have one-size-fits-all rigid standards of care, that is inconsistent with the goals and intent of this guideline as a clinical tool to It's inconsistent. So what are you going to do if there's still these policies? Well, we just want to make clear that they're inconsistent. To inform decision-making. I think operationally, if we see... Um, practices like that that are occurring, first, we see it as an educational opportunity. Certainly, if people are purporting to derive from the guideline that that's the justification for taking some rigid action that applies to all patients. So we would see that as an educational opportunity, and we'll be monitoring um, and engaging with, as I mentioned, clinical partners and patient organizations to also raise awareness uh, for where those circumstances may occur, and then engaging as appropriately to share accurate information about the latest science and about the intent of the guideline. Okay, so that was a whole lot of nothing, right? They, they had an excellent question. What are you going to do about these payer limits? And there's 38 state laws based on these CDC guidelines that you paid to have implemented everywhere. So what are you going to do? Oh, well, let's just it's a teaching moment. It's okay if millions of people blow their heads off. It's it's a teaching moment. We'll we'll just teach and you know, we'll join with patient advocacy groups and you know, it'll be great. We'll just say, you know, don't do it. Don't misapply those guidelines. Don't rapidly taper. Don't put the hard thresholds there. Just just don't. Well, I'm going to show you something else that showed up in my Google Alerts today. This is from Novant Health. Novant Health is a North and South Carolina health system. I think there's 15 hospitals, maybe 350 physicians. So that's a lot of patients that it covers. It's talking about, it says best practices managing opioid risks in older adults. I've seen a lot more um, articles lately about basically cutting 
adults off, um, elderly people off and putting them on buprenorphine because the risks of opioids that they've been on for 20 years all of a sudden are, you know, going to kill them. So we need to get everybody down. New protocols for pain management in older adults. At the health system level, the clinicians can use treatment agreements for patients taking opioids. At Novant, patients must attest that they agree to take medications as prescribed and from a specific specific pharmacy. They promise not to seek opioids in other sources, submit to random drug screening, and blah, 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 blah. If a patient violates these, their clinician can stop prescribing at any time. Yeah, we all know. We all know what it is. Over the past two years, Novant has developed an AI prediction model, which generates a score for the risk of a patient having to develop substance use disorder or experiencing an overdose within a year of initial opioid prescription. Notice they don't tell you what that AI prediction model is because, you know, why would they do that? It's more fun to have it black box. The model was validated by an internal team, but not independently certified. That's always choice. If a patient has a high risk score, the clinician considers additional risk mitigation because monthly urine screens isn't enough. So maybe they could do weekly urine screens, right? Or maybe they could do hourly pill counts. That would be fun, especially when they're 85 years old, right? They also have the option of referring to patient to a specialist in addiction medicine, because if they're high risk, then they need Suboxone, right? Because that's that's obviously what they, they need. Opioids are not necessarily withheld with a high risk score, but you know that they are withheld and they're not gonna tell you why your risk score was high because these are black box. But that's not even what I wanted to show you. Later this year are new protocols for pain management in patients aged 80 and older. Clinicians will target a 50% dose reduction compared to what a younger patient might receive to account for physiologic differences. Leadership in 2016 made the move to deprescribe opioids or lower doses of drugs to less than 90 MME in accordance with the CDC guidelines. So I want to know from the CDC on their website, don't put a hard threshold, don't force taper, don't misapply the guidelines, and don't not take a patient who's on opioids. Well, all those things are happening and you know it's happening. So you just making that statement is actually a slap in the face to pain patient and pain patient advocates who have been screaming about this since 2016. You know your guidelines in 2016 were implemented. You paid for an implementation guide and a plan. You had all of this funding for it. You did nothing to implement the 2022 guidelines. And how do I know? Well, because the first question that Christopher Jones was asked in 2022, what does he say? Oh, it'll be a teaching moment. That's what we're gonna do. We'll just say, don't do it. Shame on all of you because you knew exactly what you were doing. You know it's still being misapplied. You know patients are dying and you're doing absolutely nothing about it. Shame on you. Thank you for watching this video. Have a great day. If you've enjoyed this video, please click like and subscribe to the Dr. Patient Forum YouTube channel. You can also find us at www.thedoctorpatientforum.com or patreon.com slash thedoctorpatientforum.